Hi, this is Jeff Klein, Liaison for Publications and Communications on the RSNA Board of Directors and a thoracic radiologist at the University of Vermont Medical Center. You are likely aware through the lay press about recent cases of lung disease associated with the use of e-cigarettes or vaping, as it is often called. RSNA, along with several other medical specialty societies, has been actively engaged with the CDC as it works to investigate and identify the cause or causes of the vaping illness outbreak. This brief presentation will provide an update on this condition and focus on some of the imaging aspects you may encounter in your radiology practice. We'll review what we know and don't yet know about this outbreak, review the published imaging findings and show a case example, and provide resources from the CDC to obtain additional information and updates. What we currently know is that there have been 805 reported cases and 12 deaths associated with vaping as of September 26th. Most of these have occurred with the use of THC or CBD. 46 states and the U.S. Virgin Islands have been affected. Three quarters of the affected patients are male and two thirds are between the ages of 18 and 34 years. The case definition, which is used for tracking purposes and is not meant to be diagnostic criteria, include a history of vaping within 90 days of onset of illness, the presence of infiltrates on chest radiography and ground glass opacities on chest CT, and the exclusion of infection as a cause of the illness and radiographic and CT findings. Patients typically present with chest pain, shortness of breath, or cough. Patients may also present with GI symptoms, including abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. What we don't yet know is the cause of this lung injury. No single device type, nor any single brand, product, substance, or additive has been identified as the cause of this illness. In addition, pulmonary pathology in reported cases is not uniform. While we know that up to one half of patients who undergo bronchoalveolar lavage will be found to have lipid-laden macrophages within their airspaces, the clinical significance of this finding remains unclear. A variety of clinical and pathologic patterns of disease have been described and associated with this form of lung injury. These include diffuse alveolar damage, lipoid pneumonia, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, organizing pneumonia, and acute eosinophilic pneumonia. The imaging findings have been described in the largest clinical series published to date of 53 patients in Illinois and Wisconsin. The imaging findings that were described in this case series include the presence of bilateral opacities on chest radiography, which develop eventually in all affected patients, and the presence of ground glass opacities on CT, often with subpleural sparing. Of note, patients who present with abdominal symptoms may have the abnormalities seen in the lung bases on the uppermost portion of an abdominal CT scan performed for these patients. The imaging findings have been described in a series of 34 patients in a correspondence in the New England Journal of Medicine published in September of 2019. The CT findings of affected patients have been divided into four main patterns on CT. These include diffuse alveolar damage, lipoid pneumonia, acute eosinophilic pneumonia, and organizing pneumonia. Here is a case example provided courtesy of Dr. Travis Henry from the Department of Radiology at the University of California, San Francisco Medical Center. In this teenage patient suffering from vaping-associated lung injury, the chest radiograph demonstrates the presence of symmetric bilateral ground glass and lower zone airspace opacities with small right and probable small left pleural effusions identified. CT examination in the same patient shows the presence of bilateral ground glass opacity and more dependent airspace consolidation. A small right pleural effusion is present. The identification of similar findings on CT studies performed for acute respiratory illness in a younger male patient should prompt consideration of this particular entity 
and a history of vaping should be elicited from the patient or family. Documented or suspected cases should be reported to your local or state health department for further investigation. The CDC now has a dedicated web page to keep clinicians up to date. The link to the site is found here. The CDC site also provides recommendations for clinicians regarding reporting, getting a detailed history, differential diagnosis, treatment, and follow-up. As we learn more, RSNA will continue to keep radiologists informed on this important public health topic through RSNA communications channels. The RSNA is also planning a special focus session on this topic at the upcoming RSNA 2019 annual meeting. More details will follow. Thanks for your time.